So we'll make this a quick one. Um, I realized after I've gotten a few notes from some folks, um, <clears throat> you know, I tend to talk about things in terms of uh, people knowing or having a normal mechanical or automotive aptitude. Um, and uh, that's just kind of how I naturally talk. Um, part of it is probably because um, I'm an engineer, I manage engineers, um, and I have a certain expectation of the way that, uh, I guess a certain expectation that people have a certain level of knowledge. And that's probably, I mean, probably, that's wrong of me. Um, I want to make sure that I'm helping everybody. I don't, you know, I understand there's certain folks that just had never worked on cars before they weren't exposed to it. I started working on cars when I was, you know, 12 years old. You know, my dad worked on cars and, uh, you know, I learned very young, um, a lot of knowledge. And I was very fortunate for that. And I want to make sure that I pass that on to anybody who's interested. And that's part of why I do these videos. I don't do it for a living, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, there's no money to be made in this for me. Um, it's just a hobby. And so with that, you know, I got asked certain questions about something that I just kind of expected that people knew, but that's wrong of me. Um, when I did the electric fan upgrade on here, um, I went to a one wire alternator. That's a pretty common thing. There's a lot of folks out there that know how to do that. Um, you know, and it can be a little confusing if you've never done it before on an older vehicle where they have an external regulator. So the way that these cars were all set up all the way up through, I think the early eighties, all the alternators were externally regulated. A little bit about alternators. Alternators are actually AC generators is what they are. If you didn't know that you do now, it is a three phase generator. Actually, that's what these all are. And then they have diodes inside them. There's six diodes in it because there's three phases and um, that rectifies into DC. I won't go too much into the details of that, but then there's also a voltage regulator in most all new, just about it. Well, yeah, not even just about every alternator today has got an internal regulator in, in it. And, um, uh, when you want to go to a higher amp alternator, pretty much you're going to have to go to an internally regulated one. The voltage regulator on the Mustang is over here. Um, I have an electronic one in here. Of course, it's not being used anymore. It's unplugged. I could actually remove it. Um, what I had done was I wanted to kind of keep this thing original, and I ended up not because I needed more current. Um, I had a 75 amp replacement in here that can use the standard, uh, that can use the voltage regulator. That's an electronic one, which if you're going to stay externally regulated, get an, get an electronic one. They work so much better than the mechanical ones do. Mechanical ones have a coil and contacts in there, and they're not... They're less than awesome, um, but they only make up to a 75 amp upgrade. I had that in here. I actually have that alternator laying around. Somebody might want it. I could probably sell it. Um, uh, it, it wasn't going to be enough for an electric fan. It was enough. I upgraded because of the fuel injection because that pump pulls about 10 amps, so I needed an extra, you know, 10 amps, and that was the perfect alternator for this. Now that I've got both, I went to a 100 amp one wire alternator. And the reason they call these one wire alternators is because it literally only needs one wire. You can bolt it up, it gets its ground from the frame. That's not always the best though. You usually want to run a ground to the, to it as well. It's it's better. Sometimes there's resistance going through the block and through the mounts and stuff. So um, that's not the best way to do it. Um, but literally, you you know, very basically, you only need one wire and it goes to the battery. Now, I got asked a question, too, if it matters where you hook it up. No, it doesn't. Um, not in this case. The battery cable is huge. If you got space to put it on the starter solenoid on the battery side, you absolutely can do that. I was running out of space. It's getting a little crowded over here, and this is a number eight wire. Um, so I ran it right to the battery terminal just because it was, it, it was easier for me to do it that way. Um, Normally, if you look up the charts for number eight wire, it's actually not good for 100 amps, but this is high temperature wire. So the current carrying capacity of wires is not just the size of the wire. That's part of it. But if you use it, you can push more current through a smaller wire. It's just going to get hotter. And so the way that the you know, way that American wire gauge works is there's insulation ratings. It's usually from 60C all the way to 105C. There's some that are even higher than that, but those are the general ones you're going to see. The higher 
insulation rating. That's what that temperature is. It's not the wire itself. It's the insulation. The higher the insulation rating is temperature wise, the more current you can push through it. So this is 105 degree C uh, fine stranded wire. That's good quality wire. So that number eight can take 100 amps. Whereas if it was rated at 75 C, it might only handle 80 amps. Just as an example, I don't know exactly what the charts are off the top of my head. I always have to look it up. But um, so that's a little bit about wire. Um, then I got asked a question too about well, what do you do with the old, what do you do with the old harness? Because there's a stator wire which the voltage regulator would control the field inside of the externally alter, externally regulated alternator. That's how you you change the voltage. Um, since it's all done internally, you don't need that anymore. So um, I think it's the stator wire gets disconnected. It's either the field or the stator. I can't remember. Um, but I did go ahead and I hooked up the original ground that was on the old alternator as well as, um, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to explain why in a second, why I did this. Um, I did hook up the original hot lead with my new in parallel, which goes up to the battery. I, this wire also goes to the battery, but it does something else too. And this is something that you're going to find out when you go to put a one wire alternator in here. You're, if you have an ammeter, your ammeter is not going to work anymore. So current, there's two ways to measure current, okay? It's not like a voltmeter. Current has to be measured um, if it's going to be a physical connection. It actually has to be in line with your power draw. So I'm just trying to find a better way to explain that. So if I was to cut this battery, if I want to know how much current was going through this battery cable right here, whether it's going in or out, positive or negative, because current can be positive or negative, um, if I was to cut this in half, I'd, I'd have to disconnect it and put it through an ammeter. All the current would have to go through an ammeter, and uh, then I could accurately measure the current. Um, there's another way that you can do that. Now they have current, what's called a CT or a current transformer, which actually puts a field around here, and it can measure it can measure the amount of current going through here by the size of the field. Um, the way that they did them back in the day on these, when they had ammeters, which were more related to generators, that's why they had ammeters. Um, let's wait for the airplane to go by as usual. The way that they did these um, was when you have the ability to draw 50, 60, 80 amps, you know, through here, you can't put that through an ammeter. You don't want an ammeter that size. That means you got to pull this battery cable that's this size all the way into the car. So the way that these worked was the ammeter would be in series, sorry, excuse me, the ammeter would be in parallel with the wire that's also going to the battery from the alternator. And the, the reason that they did that was it was sized very specifically with a very certain resistance. And the reason that they did that was because a percentage of the current would go through the ammeter. So basically, they had, you know, imagine this is the ammeter and this is the line going directly to the battery. They're both got the same source and destination. They're both going from the alternator to the battery. The ammeter is going to measure, say, 10% of that current. Um, so some of it's going through the ammeter, but a larger portion of the current's going through the cable that you've got in between. That's how they did that. Otherwise, you'd, like I said, you'd have to have some gigantic cable running through and a gigantic ammeter. Um, they kind of did away with ammeters. Ammeters aren't really used anymore. Um, we generally know your alternator has enough output if you're at 13 and a, really 13.2, 13.5 volts. It's really the minimum you want to be at. So if you start dragging too much on your charging system or, or you've got too much current out and not enough going back into the battery, um, you're going to, you know, you're going to be below 13 volts or so and you're going to be hurting. A uh, fully charged battery is 12.6. Um, so you don't want that to happen because what will happen is you discharge the battery when you're sitting in a light and a fan's running or whatever, and then you charge it back up. It's, it's hell on the battery. It'll beat the crap out of them. You want to always make sure that you have enough current while uh, you're sitting there idling. So full load everything. You want to make sure your alternator is going to cover it. Um, so that that's just some basics on uh, charging system. Um, you know, I hope that that helps. I, I did get some questions on this. So I wasn't originally going to cover this, but I think folks want to know. So again, uh, I disconnected the, the field control for the alternator. You don't need that. I just put some shrink wrap on it. The old hot is hooked up and the new one. And the reason that the old hot is hooked up is because that way the ammeter kind of functions. So now there's like 
you know, 1% of the current is going through the ammeter now because I've got a much lower resistance path going through here to the battery. So the ammeter really doesn't do much, but it will tell me if it's discharging. Now, I don't really care anymore anyways because my fuel injection tells me what the voltage is. If you don't have that, you can put it in a voltmeter. A voltmeter is much better. It's much better than the ammeter. You're just put a voltmeter in somewhere, hide it, you know, or you know, don't hide it. I don't know, whatever. You could replace the stock gauge, you know, if you want to do some custom work. Um, but yeah, you get a voltmeter with, you, there's, there's no other option unless you, if you need more than 75 amps, that externally regulated 75 amp power master that they make, that's a good alternator. Um, but if you need more current than that, like I did, forget it, you know, you, you're, you're going to have to go to a one wire internally regulated alternator. Um, so that's just covering the basics here.